All right, good afternoon. This is Tad Johnson from Jam Software. Thanks to everyone who has joined us on the WebEx for our webinar this afternoon. Uh, we've got a great program scheduled ahead. So with that, why don't we go ahead and begin. Uh, today's webinar, the subject of today's webinar is uh, all about how Gateway Church manages Mac and iPad and really does some interesting stuff with it. I'm joined today by Jim Alsop, who is the IT Help Desk Manager at Gateway Church. Uh, Jim, would you like to introduce yourself? Hey, uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Jim Alsop. I am, like he said, the uh, IT Help Desk Manager here at uh, Gateway Church. Excellent. Thanks, Jim. Well, uh, I had a chance to, to get to uh, hear a little bit about Jim's story of how he's managing Mac and iPad at, at Gateway Church and some of the cool stuff that they're doing with technology in that organization. Uh, so I wanted to kind of bring that story forward, and Jim was kind enough to agree to join me on today's webinar and share that story with all of you. So to give you a little background, um, Jim, can you tell us a little bit about your organization, about Gateway Church, and kind of what the what your organization looks like? Yeah, no problem. Um, it's a uh, it's a church, but at the same time, it's actually a rather large uh, corporation. We have over 650 full-time staff, um, and that's continuing to grow. And we have about the equal number of part-time staff, if not more. We have 13 different locations uh, across the Dallas-Fort Worth metroplex, and we have a little over 30-something thousand people that attend our uh, weekend services. So it's a, it's a pretty large church, to say the least. Yeah, that's that's pretty neat. And uh, and you know the the topic we're going to focus on today is a little bit about how you're using uh, technology or how the role of IT fits in with Gateway. Uh, so can you tell us or you know, share with the audience here a little bit about? Um, obviously, it's a bigger organization than you might imagine when you first think of a church, but what are some of the ways that you're using uh, using technology as part of that mission? Well, we use technology a ton here at Gateway, um, and one of the big focuses uh, for us, being the church aspect of it, is is that we're extremely relational, and so we don't have the confines of your typical corporation where IT gets to lock everything down. So. Um, all the full-time staff, their admins on their Macs, um, but we use uh, technology not only obviously for the individuals in their staff computers, but we have, um, you know, children's check-in kiosk, we have point of sales, we have um, iPads, we have a whole set of uh, Mac Pros that are used as musical instruments uh, with, you know, keyboard programs, synthesizer applications, and that type of stuff. So we really have a wide range of applications that we use. I mean, we even have a school of worship uh, that has 30 iMacs that are all configured with, you know, Pro Tools and other audio engineering. We also have video editing suites. So the scope that we use um, our technology here at Gateway, you know, ranges anything from, like I said, big stuff all the way down to just the simple, hey, I use Outlook and Word and, you know, I'm just doing basic stuff. Mm -hmm. And and um, when you started at, at Gateway, um, can you share some of the, you know, what are some of the challenges that you encountered in terms of managing this diverse set of, of technology devices and, and applications and uses? Well, which is kind of typical in, in churches, you know, they usually use a lot of volunteers and they use, oh, well, you know, computers, let's have you be our IT guy and, and stuff like that. So for the longest time, they didn't really have a lot of uh, the IT infrastructure in, in place to really support the size that Gateway had become. And so when I, when I took over as the help desk manager, um, we had a lot of challenges. One of the first things that I discovered when I talked to my crew, I had five help desk technicians at the time, and I asked each one of them, hey, how do you set up a Mac? And all five of them had their own way of doing it, and none of them were the same, and it was kind of chaotic. And I was like, okay, well, the first thing we need to do is kind of standardize. We're all going to set up our computers the same way. We're all going to do this the same way. And so starting out right off the get-go was to do 
you know, add some structure and say, okay, we're going to at least do these basic things the same and, and kind of start from there. But it was, it was pretty crazy when I first took over about a year and a half ago. And I'm sure that that, you know, for anyone who's, who's listening in, I'm sure we can all relate to that. I know when I first started out in my, my first role in an IT, IT position, it's easy to get to that point where there's a lot of complexity and it's, it can be a challenge to, to bring that back into uh, normalized status. Um, but I know, you know, one of the tools that you're using, and obviously not the only one, but one of the tools is the one that we were going to talk about today, uh, the Casper Suite. And just so I can, uh, you know, it's my role here as the as the as the host. Um, for anyone who's not familiar with the Casper Suite, uh, what we do here at Jam Software, we make a uh, a platform for managing Apple devices, whether that's iPads, iPhones, or even iPod Touch for mobile devices, or Mac computers. Uh, and what we build is a a suite of tools that you can use to do everything from set up the initial deployment. Uh, software deployment, inventory, security settings, uh, all rolled together into one tool. So this was kind of the connection point of how I got to, uh, how I met you, Jim. Um, and I thought today we could talk a little bit about the, the some of the specific ways that you're using Casper Suite and, the, and those tools uh, to uh, to accomplish some of these tasks that uh, that you're doing with technology at Gateway. Um, yeah, and I thought the first one we could we could look at is the imaging workflow. So that, you know, that challenge you talked about, um, you mentioned that you have kind of different types of, of devices. So can you walk us through a little bit of how, you know, how do you take a, a brand new Mac out of a box and get that ready for someone or, or a brand new iPad? Yeah, no problem. Yeah, cool. we actually deal with um, a lot of, of new staff and transitioning staff. It is really unique to our, our particular area. And Right out of the box, we take a you know a, a new Mac Pro right out of the box, and we have a basic configuration set up so that um, pretty much any of the techs uh, can set it up in target disk mode, connect it up, and we can image a brand new Mac right out of the box in you know a little bit under 10 minutes to have it all set up and have the 80 credentials and you know, everything out the door. And that really, really helps us out, especially when we were, when I first started, we were doing everything manually. So if you just put in, you know, Microsoft Office, you have to load that, and then you have to hit next and all this other stuff, and then you have to do all the patches and everything else, and you could spend, you know, 45 minutes just installing, you know, Microsoft Office for Mac, whereas now I can do the whole computer in that same time frame. Um, so that really, really helps when when you're trying to standardize and get stuff done in a timely manner. And then if you want to talk about all the rest of the different setups that we have, it just makes it so much easier to configure and, and deploy. Yeah, I've, I brought up here one of the screenshots that you shared with me. So you've got... Um, Within Casper Admin, which is the tool, again, part of the Casper suite, this is the tool where you can uh, kind of create different imaging configurations. And I can see you've got a number of different configurations um, for is this for different types of users or different types of computers. No, that's exactly what it is. So the, the configuration that I just talked about was uh, your basic user setup. And what, what you're actually seeing highlight right now is actually the School of Worship. And, and that was a huge project that we, um, that we undertook. And if you look through there, it's all music type uh, of stuff there. So you got Pro Tools, you got Omnisphere, you got Inbox, you got Main Stage. You have all these rather expensive and huge programs. Um, and that right there was for the School of Worship. So, if there's ever a problem with any of the 30 uh, iMacs that are in the School of Worship that we can't fix in a in a timely manner, we're probably just going to, you know, blow it away and and reload the whole configuration. And you find that that's actually quicker than than rebuilding it one at a time or rebuilding. It oh, one yeah, OmniSphere is like I think six or seven CD-ROMs just to load the Omnisphere program. 
Um, so when we were building that Omnisphere package, it it uh, it took Jonathan. He's my Jamf lead. It took him almost a whole day just to do the the Omnisphere package, and then of course we wanted it in different file structures. So that one package took a lot to do, but now that it's done, it's it's so much easier to deal with. And obviously, you're you know when it comes to uh, to actually writing these images, instead of having your stack full of CDs, um, you can you know take advantage of the much faster uh, data connections. Like I think when we talked before, you said you've got a uh, an iMac with a, a Drobo connected to it, like one of these yes. multiple drive machines. That's correct. Yeah, we have. Um, <laughs> if you if you mess around with Casper imaging enough, you're probably going to get in a hurry one day, and you're going to be rushed and and you're going to image your own computer. It's just a matter of time. <laughs> You'll do it. Everyone can laugh. There's those that have, and there's those that will. Um, so I found it's easier just to have an iMac. And what we did was, um, just because of our locations that we have, the main JSS server you know, is in our main admin building, but we're at a satellite location. So it was just faster. Um, it, it's, we do have layer two connections between the site, but having a Drobo set up with uh, solid state drives in it and using the uh, Thunderbolt connection was just so much faster, especially when we're doing large, large images like the School of Worship is a huge, huge setup. Nice. And that's a good, yeah, perfect, perfect use case for using that really fast Thunderbolt connectivity. And the nice thing is that now, I believe every Mac that Apple ships right now is come, comes with a Thunderbolt port or two. Yep, that is correct. Right. And with them being all solid state drives now, um, it's it's a lot easier to use. Um, so you mentioned you've also got some you know you've got volunteers that are coming through uh, through your organization that might need a computer for a day, but not one that's permanently assigned to them. Uh, and you sent me this nice photo of, of show, kind of showing how you do your uh, loaner cart program. Do you want to mention yeah. how that works? Yeah, we um, we have the loaner set up, and there was in the previous screen there was uh, in Casper Admin we had the loaner, um, and so the the computers that are on top uh, are back from being used by either volunteers or temporary staff, and the ones that are in the cart are ready to go. And so basically we just have a tech that uh, once a week they just go through and re-image those computers real quick um, with the loaner configuration. So just erase them all the way down to nothing, put all standard package back on there, and it includes a couple of generic users. Um, we don't have to actually use, you know, an LDAP or AD account on those if, if if they're just for a volunteer, so we have a local user account for them. But we just erase them and knock them out, and it takes you know 10 minutes or so. But it makes it real easy to configure a loaner laptop, and they're all the same, so everybody knows what those accounts are, and and they are hooked up and bound to domain as well. So if we needed to, then I could log in with you know first dot last and my password, and and it would work just as any other computer. So it's really handy and it makes it real easy for us to provide service to our clients, which is the church staff. That's really neat. Um, one other thing, now I don't have a, a photo of this one, but you mentioned that you're doing uh, some neat stuff with iPads as well, um, like in the, the musical, uh, the, the worship team that's using them as musical instruments or part of their musical instruments. Um, can you describe a little bit of how, how you manage and deploy iPads with Casper Suites? Yeah, that is actually starting to grow a lot in our area. Um, we've recently, well, let me let me backtrack. We basically have two categories. We have iPads that are issued to the staff, and then we have what we call department-owned iPads. Now, the departments are the staff-owned iPads are basically, hey, you know, this is your iPad, you know, Pastor John Smith, and you know. Do whatever it is that you need to do, and we'll provide whatever you need for it. But for the department ones, those are the ones that we lock down. So we have, you know, find my iPad, you know, enabled. We have our own uh, generic 
you know, email address and Apple ID that we use for that. We use Casper Suite to make pretty much everything not available because we don't need people messing with the settings and stuff like that. Um, for like check-in iPads, we'll have it to where only certain uh, in-house applications work and our default one will actually be the one that, that normally starts up. And so it makes it easier so that any volunteer that is serving in that particular ministry and they're assigned to you know help check in, well, they can just grab one of the iPads, you know, as soon as they open it up, it boom, you know, there's the Gateway Members app, and they can go right to to serving in that particular ministry. It makes it real easy. You don't have to worry about telling them which app to open up, and I don't have to worry about someone getting bored in between services and, you know, changing settings and everything. It is, It has been a real time saver, and be not only a time saver for us, but it really helps out with the ministries too, because how many times, you know, have our staff been frustrated because they couldn't use the technology. It wasn't that the technology was broken, but just for whatever reason, they couldn't figure it out or it got on the wrong setting. Well, if we make the iPads to where they only do what we want them to do, well, then the technology is more reliable and they have a better experience using it. And it's a win-win for everybody. I think that's that's just so neat. I think that's a, a really good example of how you can take an iPad, which is a very general purpose device, and you know, without uh, by using some of these technologies that are, are built in, you make that purpose specific. And like you were saying, I love the idea that you just pick up the iPad and it's ready to go, and you don't have to you don't have to know a lot about exactly how an iPad works and how it's configured in order to use that. I think that's a really neat example, Jim. Very cool. Um, one of the other things that that uh, that's near and dear to to my heart is you know you touched on this at the very beginning of um, the the service oriented IT department um, and this is something that here at at Jamf Software we've been trying to build our tools obviously it's built for IT staff you know the Casper Suite is a tool to empower IT admins to to do more um, and to really make their their jobs more efficient. At the same time, though, we want to provide tools that can make an end user's life a little easier and hopefully give them a really good, positive experience as well. And one of the expressions of that is um, our self-service tool. Um, this is the part of the Casper suite that is user-facing. So when you have a Mac or a, an iPad that is managed by the Casper suite, you can have self -ser the self-service app, which is uh, essentially a catalog or a service portal where a user can interact with it and do things like installing software or um, running updates. Now, with all that said, I know, Jim, here's an example of what you're using at, uh, at Gateway. Do you want to tell us a little bit about how you put self-service to work and maybe what the, you know, what the experience is for, for one of your staff members? Yeah, self-service has been um, a lifesaver for us in many ways. Uh, one of the biggest ways if you just look in the right hand side, we're very fond of printers at, uh, at at Gateway, and we have a ton of network printers. And installing network printers on a Mac with a Windows environment on the back side using print servers it can be a little bit cumbersome. But the great thing about self-service is is that we have every one of the I think it's close to 90 network printers or something crazy big like that, all available in self-service. So no matter what you know which campus you're located at, um, you can go there and select on it. Like printers at uh, ADM is our admin building, so the user could just click on that side on the categories, and every network printer and admin that's available is there. Uh, one of the other things too for us is. We had we got hit with like a thirteen thousand dollar overage charge for our color printing, and so um, the executive director of technology, you know, came to me and was like, "We need to, you know, cut down on this. This is this is out of control." So one of the things we did, we leveraged the Casper suite, and uh, Jonathan and, and my team did a really good job of doing it real quick. Was 
we just changed all the printers so it was defaulted to black and white. You can still print in color, but you printing out the email that has the color logo of whatever your company on is not needed. It's not, you know, you don't have to have that logo in color. And those kind of small changes, you know, have a dramatic impact on the bottom line. And so we were able to do that real easy using the Casper suite. And then we pointed everybody to, you know, self-service. So we just basically made a policy and cleared everybody's print queues and let everybody know that we're sorry, we had to do this, and you can re-add the printers as you see fit using self-service. And when they did, it was defaulted to black and white. They can still print in color if they choose, but simple things like that really, really helped out. We also use it with um, file shares. So we have a Windows um, infrastructure on the back end, and department shares and Macs are a little bit cumbersome. And so in self-service, if someone's user drive loses its mapping, they can just open up self-service. We've got some scripts in there. They don't know that they're scripts, but they just say, you know, map my network drive, and they click the little button, and it sees who's logged in, and maps the drives for them. So that right there helps us out, too. Nice. Very cool. I think, you know, I, this is something that I use as a as an employee. You know, not surprisingly, Jamf Software is also a customer of Jamf Software. So we use, you know, I, I use self-service, um, maybe not on a daily basis, but probably once a week I, I have a need to go in there and, and use something. Um, and for me, it's just really nice to know that this is my connection back to our IT team, and I don't have to submit a, a help ticket or I don't have to call up and, and you know, bother one of them. Um, really neat to see it that this is, that you're putting this back to work. Um, one other topic I thought we'd cover on real quick is kind of the, you know, the nuts and bolts of, of the IT role. So tracking inventory, thinking about security, and thinking about keeping everything up to date and patched. Um, and Jim, you shared a, uh, this is the screenshot you shared with me. This is the uh, Jamf software, kind of your, your database uh, of the Jamf software server. And again, there's a little background. If For anyone who's new to the Casper suite, you might not know what this screen looks like. But this is what um, this is what you see when you log into the web console uh, through the the Casper suite. You can set up a um, you can set up a dashboard like this where you can track any of the inventory or policy or a configuration items that you're you're concerned about. And I like this, Jim, because I, I see you've got a number of a number of of bits that relate back to these topics. So, for example, I see uh, shell shock. It looks like you you set up a couple of uh, a couple of, of uh, policies to look for the presence of the shell shock vulnerability, and as you can see, a number of other patches that you're deploying. So, can you walk us through? Like, maybe that's a good example to start with. What what was the shell shock remediation project, and how did you use Casper Suite for that? Yeah. So, what we did was is when obviously when the shell shock thing uh, was announced, um, we went through and I set up. Uh, a couple of policies that, A, okay, who is vulnerable, um, and then what operating system are there, are there on, because there was uh, different fixes depending upon if you were on 10.8.5 or 10.9.5. And then it created another policy to actually uh, run the patch uh, to fix it. So I think from the time that we were made aware of it to the time that we had almost everybody patched, uh, was maybe four or five hours, and we were we were pretty much good to go. I mean, I got a few that you could see right here. We tried launching it again, um, and so that's why I said nine completed to two failing on those. But for the most part, we had you know 98 percent success right in the first you know four or five hours of that. Uh, that being out there, which was really good to be able to go to my IT director and say, "All right, we're already we're already done and fixed as far as the Mac is concerned," and go from there. But the Casper suite, if you if you look at some of the other you know things that I'm looking at, um, it really it helps you manage your computers, and especially in our environment where you know, everybody's admins and, and they know enough to, you know, 
mess things up. So I kind of have to kind of check on them and see who's doing what and then kind of go back behind the scenes and and put that stuff in there. Right. Well, that's, you know, four hours from from uh, the moment that you started this project to when you can turn around to your IT security folks and say, yep, we're all good. That's a, that's got to make a smile or bring a smile to your face and to your, your group. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Awesome. Um, so I've just got one other uh, one other section I want to touch on, and then we do have a couple of questions coming in. So yeah. uh, we will try to cover uh, a handful of questions here before we are uh, done with our program. But I'm going to skip past my my section. So Jim, when you when you think about the you know the IT's overall impact on Gateway, if you look at where you're at today versus where you're at when you started. Um, can you share, you know, what what are some of the happy the happy positive stories that that you've seen, and how you, IT has had a positive impact on your organization? Well, when I took over, um, my first day on, on the job, we had some 300, almost 400 uh, help desk tickets that was specifically for help desk, you know, not for systems or not for networking, but just no joke help desk requests. A lot of those were two months old, three months old. I had some tickets that were six months old. Um, now, if you look at where we're at, we in 2014, my shop alone did uh, over 9,000 help desk requests. And 48% um, of those requests were, were they were closed in the uh, first 24 hours of them being submitted. So that's a pretty remarkable number um, in any stretch of the imagination. If you have 9,000 help desk requests and 48% of them are handled in the first 24 hours, that's that's remarkable 12-star service, if you, if you ask me. Um, Absolutely. And that really, really helps out because the ministries are no longer thinking that IT is this black hole that they put in a request and, you know, six months later someone's going to actually get to them. But we actually get to them in the first, you know, 24 hours. Very cool. No, that's fantastic. Well, why don't we why don't we pause here and um, we'll try to answer a couple questions uh, from, from the audience. So uh, the first question that came in, a uh, really good question. I know that you and I talked about this. Um, earlier, but we haven't yet covered it today. Can you talk a little bit about uh, some of the the ways that you're working with with the Apple programs as part of your uh, IT landscape? For example, device enrollment program, uh, volume purchase program, or or other ways that you're working with Apple? Yes, um, the DEP is absolutely amazing. <laughs> Um, if you get the chance to get your organization involved in Apple's um, debt program, you you need to do it. I highly encourage it. It makes life so much easier. Um, Jim, let me just, let me just yeah, go ahead. Ahead. sorry, one for one moment for for anyone who's new to that. That's uh, DEP is Device Enrollment Program, DEP, um, and this is the program Jim Jim's talking about. Go ahead. Yeah, so when we, um, like let's take iPads for example. Um, we can we can take the iPads and just pull them out of the box and then just actually hand them to the staff member and we just tell them, hey, look, email us with your Apple ID so we know what Apple ID you're going to use because most everybody has their own Apple ID nowadays. I mean, even grandma and grandpa have their own Apple IDs. And with the volume purchasing program, we can use whatever Apple ID they want to. They just got to tell us what their Apple ID is. And, you know, it could be Jesus Rocks at yahoo.com. And, okay, fine. We'll hook you up. And what apps do you need? And we can use the volume purchasing program to assign those apps to that particular Apple ID. And that's how you use the volume purchasing program. Now, with the DEP, they can just pull out the the iPad out of the box, and as soon as it talks to Apple's <clears throat> servers, it knows it's Gateway Church's iPad, and it immediately, you know, starts talk, you know, talking to it, and 
just starts downloading, you know, the stuff that we have regulated for it. Make sense? Yeah, that's. I know. I'm. I'm always kind of amazed when when that process kicks off, how simple it is, and how, like you're saying, you don't have to do anything extra other than here's your iPad, turn it on, connect it to the network, and the yep. rest of it will happen automatically. I think that's a really really neat program. And we were just trying it. We were just trying it actually um, over the the cell too. Um, I I set up my iPad um, via you know AT and T. You know, 4G network. Just trying that one out, just to see how it would work if we had to, um, you know, ship an iPad to somewhere and they didn't open it up the first time on our network, and it worked like a champ. That's awesome. So it's even even outside outside of Wi-Fi coverage, you can still uh, yeah. you can still make that happen. Well, you know, you you mentioned it right off the bat here, but I will certainly echo that for anyone who is not yet uh, who is not yet experienced. The device enrollment program and volume purchase program. Uh, Jim recommends it. I would highly recommend it as well. You can find out more information about that uh, if you go to deploy.apple.com uh, or if you want to on jamsoftware.com. We have a couple of pages that describe that process as well. Uh, really neat device enrollment program, volume purchase program. Um, one other quick question came in, uh, Jim. Uh, let's see. Ben was wondering how many how many users do you have on Mac? versus Windows at Gateway? Well, that's been hotly debated. <laughs> um, we have right now over 700 uh, Apple devices, and we have about 360, 350 uh, PC devices. So I hope that, that answers your question as best I can. Um, so seven, 700 Apple and 350 PC devices. There's very few departments that are PC only. So like accounting is uh, PC, facilities is PC, human resources is PC, and a few other you know departments like that that run PC only software. Other than that, everybody else is on a Mac. So all the men's department, women's department, worship, media, et cetera, they're all on, on Mac. So only a select few that have to be on PCs are on PCs. Gotcha. Very cool. Well, um, I think that it looks like we've got a couple more coming in, so I will, I will field more questions as we go. But the last, the last thing I wanted to ask you, Jim, is uh, any recommendations for, for someone who's new, either new to Apple, new to the Casper suite, or in a position like you were where you know, starting off with an organization and looking to bring some, you know, some standardization into their role. Uh, do you have any recommendations on kind of how to how to get started? Well, I'm a big fan of the uh, Jamp uh, classes. Um, I I myself took uh, the classes that you guys offered here in Dallas. At the time, it was a CCA and CMA. You guys have since changed your certification process, but. Um, I went and, uh, and two of my tier threes uh, I have sent, and I was in the process of sending another one uh, of this year. I'm a huge fan of that. If you can, if you can get the time and and the money to go to one of the classes, I highly recommend that you actually go to the the on campus you know Jamf training. It, it was, I think it's priceless in my personal opinion. Jamp Nation is uh, amazing. We spend quite a lot of time in Jamp Nation. Um, great folks there. Um, just it's 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 awesome. Okay. Well, th thank you for the compliments. I'm glad that I'm glad that you found our training courses and our and Jamp Nation helpful. Uh, again, for just to bring everyone else up to speed. Uh, so the courses that Jim mentioned, we have. Uh, we have a number of courses that cover kind of the introduction, uh, advanced, and then expert level courses. This covers not just how to use the Casper Suite, but really how to manage Apple devices. So if you want to, to put the device enrollment program and volume purchase program to work in your organization, you can get hands-on experience uh, through these classes. They're offered around the world. Uh, so if 
no matter where you are, chances are there's a class happening somewhere not too far away. Uh, and we can also bring them to you. So if you have a large staff and everyone needs to get trained, uh, we can actually bring, bring a class directly to you. Um, and the last part, you know, Jim, you mentioned Jamf Nation. This is something that I think that we've really been proud of here at Jamf Software. Uh, this is not our, you know, this is not something that we sell. We don't gate this information in any way. Uh, what we're trying to do with Jamf Nation is, is help to foster a community of IT professionals around Apple management. So there is obviously lots of information. There's thousands of people that are doing interesting and cool stuff every day re regarding using Apple technology and how they manage that in their organizations. So if you head over to jampnation.com, you can find discussions from other IT professionals. There's a knowledge base. Uh, if you are using Casper Suite, you can submit feature requests, find user groups. And if you're in a spot where you're looking for your next, your next challenge, uh, we also have a job board, or if you're looking to hire someone with Apple IT experience, that's a great place to go as well. Uh, again, this is 100% free to use. We don't, uh, we don't restrict access in any way. So whether you're a customer today or just, just uh, investigating, I encourage you to check out jampnation.com. Well, hey, Tad. Uh, yeah. I'm, uh, I wanted to check and make sure that I had answered uh, Kevin No's question. Uh, well enough. Oh, yeah. I believe he had asked about if we used the depth to automate our imaging for our Macs. I believe that was one of the questions I saw in the chat. We we currently do not use we don't use the depth um, to automate the imaging of the actual Macs that are going to be issued to staff. What we do use it for is we automate the uh, the configuration of our iPads as far as you know, using the depth to trigger, you know, automation and workflows as such. But for the actual staff, we still use the uh, Casper suite and we use um, the, uh, the Casper imaging to set that up. We're not in a position right now to use the, uh, to automate all of our, our computer setups. Got it. Thanks for, thanks for following back on that. And uh, that to Kevin's question. Thanks, Jim. So we we've already kind of gone through a couple of these, but if there are other questions, um, you know, please submit those now. Um, so we covered. Let's see. We covered off on on device enrollment program. We talked a little bit about the volume purchase program. Uh, talked about the the ratio of Mac and Windows PCs in your organization. Uh, I think we've we've hit all hit on all of them so far. Well, let me just say, Jim. I want to say a big thank you to you. Uh, this has been really, really great, great opportunity to um, to kind of talk about how you are putting this to work uh, in your organization. Big thank you. Um, ah, let's see. There is. Let me go back here. I do. Get, I am getting a couple more questions coming in. Uh, so let's see. Jonathan was wondering about uh, more about using device enrollment program in conjunction with Casper. Are there any other resources available or a webinar coming up? Jonathan, good question. If you head over to jampsoftware.com, uh, you can find we did a webinar about device enrollment program on that topic specifically. Uh, and you can also find a couple of resources like a technical guide as well as an, uh, more of a high level overview of how that program works. Uh, you, you just head to our website, search for DEP. Um, you can find more information there. Uh, for device enrollment. Um, Jim, another question for you coming from, uh, oh, and another good point is that if you are a customer of Apple's right now, so you're looking to get started with that, I'd encourage you to check in with your uh, business teams at Apple because they are obviously looking to, to help their customers get started with device enrollment. So if you're in a spot and uh, looking to get started, contact your uh, local business team from Apple. Thanks, David, for that, that tip. Uh, Jim, another question from Nick. Uh, so he asked, how are the Macs connecting to Active Directory, or is uh, Open Directory being used? Um, no, we, we use Active Directory. We use the Windows Active Directory. Um, we bind them to domain um, the whole nine yards. So 
they are they are connected to our Active Directory. We do not use Open Directory here. And so that's Active Directory with the the pure native Apple Active Directory connection. That's correct. Yep. Yep. Okay. Cool. Looks like we just got next follow-up question as well. So you're binding natively? Yeah. Cool. Yep. That's correct. Awesome. Good um, question. Yeah. We did change the um, the check-in kind the time on Max. Max by default um, require they check in to get the password authentication with Active Directory every 15 days, whereas Windows is like 45. So we have changed ours to not require that check-in with Active Directory and the DCs uh, till 60 days. Because a lot of our pastors, they, you know, they're gone around the, you know, traveling and stuff. That's why they're on their laptops. And we found that it would break that trust relationship with Active Directory with the 15 days. And so we we used Casper and changed everything so that it only now requires that handshake uh, every 60 days. And that helps so we don't break the trust relationship with our Macs and Active Directory. And uh, Dave, Dave was wondering, is your is your domain a dot local domain or a fully qualified domain? Um, it's fully qualified. Okay, so they could connect from not just inside your network, but from if they're traveling or they're working from home. Yeah, well, we use we use um, like SonicWall Mobile Connect and NetExtender if you want to connect um, from abroad. So, how oh, that helps clear that one up. Awesome. Uh, one other question uh, coming from Lorenzo, um, asking how how did the Mac talk to the Casper Suite server? We actually have um, two Casper Suite servers. We have one in uh, the DMZ public facing. So if you're at Starbucks or anywhere in the world, you're going to be able to hit um, the public facing. Um, JSS server and then we have another JSS server that actually sits inside our network and they share the same SQL database and there's a whole bunch of uh, white papers and how to do that in uh, Jamf Nation but that's really helped us out because if somebody needs you know software or um, you know some assistance we that we can help out via self-service because there's one JSS sitting in the DMZ that is public facing. So if someone needs some software and they're on a missions trip, for example, we can we can put that software and make it available in self-service and they can just open up the self-service app provided they have an internet connection and, and download that software right there. Very cool. And, and again, just from a, I can cover the, the beginner level stuff. Um, a, a Mac will talk to the Casper Suite server uh, primarily over secure HTTP. So um, any you know any network that would work for secure web browsing should work for communicating with the Casper Suite server as well. So it's pretty, we've tried to design our our software to be as you know low impact as possible in terms of what other requirements you have. Uh, Jonathan had one other question: Do you use Netboot services at all for uh, for your remote support? Um, no, not at this time. Not at this time. Easy enough. And and again, for anyone who's not familiar, Netboot is similar to uh, Pixie Boot that you might know from the Windows side. It's a way to uh, to boot up a Mac over the network instead of using the local drive. Um, so yeah, our our network um, we have well, you, typical industry. You know, the network guys they want to you know lock every port you know, uh, known to man down, and so it makes it a little bit difficult to have net boots in all of our different locations and subnets. I'm working on it, but we're not there yet. Well, but of course, it's hard to, it's hard to argue with, uh, with the speeds of a Thunderbolt connection, right? That's true. That's my workaround. We all have, every one of my help desk techs, um, we all have lacy drives, and they are partitioned and formatted. I got this idea actually from going to the Casper training. And so we can just boot up um, to the actual Lacey drive and it's got the full Casper suite on there. And we can 
re-image a computer right there if we needed to with uh, with our Lacy drives. I issue a Lacy to each one of the techs and we configure them that way. So that's also a good handy option to have if you have multiple locations and a text driving out there. Very cool. Um, one other question came in just as we were talking here. Uh, going back to the Active Directory topic, if you have a Mac that is not uh, bound to your domain, does that limit the functionality of what you can do with the Casper Suite? No, it doesn't. Uh, it, it doesn't limit us in any way, shape, or form. Um, we did find that it was better for us to have um, standard users in Casper Suite because when the IT director decided that the help desk team were not going to be domain admins anymore, um, our our Casper LDAP accounts behaved accordingly. And so that, that was a little bit difficult learning curve, but we've since just made standard user accounts for the help desk techs and, and that kind of alleviated that question. But as far as the actual computers themselves, we actually have a group of uh, computers that are not uh, bound to the domain. Those are our production um, machines that, that, you know, won't need to be bound to domain. I hope that answers the question. I think it does. Thank you. Well, good. Well, again, uh, Jim, let me go back here and let me just say a uh, big thank you on behalf of myself and everyone here at Jam Software and um, you know, thank you to everyone who has attended and um, thank you for sharing your story of how you are putting Apple technology and Casper Suite technology to great use at Gateway at Gateway Church. So big thank you no Jim, problem. Um, and to, to you and everyone else on the on the call today. Hope you have a great rest of your week. Thanks guys. Cheers. <laughs>